Hello there. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Playing games with a keen eye for nearly 19 years, semi-competitively, seeking answers to many questions through a tremendous amount of personal look depth and research, being extremely sensitive to latency and lack of accessibility to required materials have taught me many valuable things. And in this video, I will share my knowledge and experiences concerning DPI values. It looks judgmental, subjectively and objectively, but you have asked me why we use 1600 DPI specifically. Please watch the full video to understand how and why a DPI value behaves in specific ways. The timestamps for the topics I will cover are in the video description. I suggest you to watch this video, how does the computer mouse work? The link to the video is in the video description. Okay, I'm going to assume that you have already watched and understood the video that I mentioned above. You might be familiar with how resolution affects the sharpness of an image. Suppose you are looking at a 1080p resolution image on a display. It won't take much effort until you see the individual pixels the image is made off of. If you zoom the image or get closer to the screen than the ideal viewing distance. 4K resolution for comparison compared to 1080p, it has 4 times as much resolution, thus it contains 4 times the information that 1080p has. Likewise, the computer mice works the same way too. The more information the mouse sensor can capture, the more precise the mouse movement will be. But there's a catch to that, which I'll get back to at the end of this video. If you want precise mouse movement, there is more than just setting up the correct DPI value. Depending on what pulling rate your mouse is operating at tells your system how frequently you're making any moves or changes using your mouse. A standard office mouse could range from 125Hz to 500Hz, whereas a gaming mouse at this point of recording this video goes from 1000Hz to 8000Hz. A higher pulling rate usually lowers the processing delay. In other words, it can provide far more information to the computer at a given time than the counterpart. An office mouse operates at 125Hz or once every 8 milliseconds, whereas a gaming mouse could operate at 1000Hz or once per millisecond. Although knowing all of these things in theory sounds awesome, choosing the correct DPI and pulling rate value is crucial if you want to push your skills and furthermore your knowledge. Increasing the DPI value gives you precise mouse movement and a higher pulling rate value gives you faster response time. Still, there is a diminishing return when it comes to practical applications. Some players have slow reaction times while trying to track a moderately steady or quick moving object, unable to identify the subject from the background, thus being unable to follow the subject matter, unpredictable subject movement, etc. It could be partially related to inexperienced, improper mouse settings, the response time of their PCs, lack of understanding of how to use their gear correctly. Some players tend to stick with a single DPI and pulling rate value and don't want to change it, whereas some like to experiment with different DPI values without even noticing any change but stick to it. Some don't know what DPI value they are playing on, etc. I could be ranting about it all day, but I needed to point out the mistakes most people make choosing the gear they want to purchase and most importantly, the settings they should use and whatnot. Alright, enough about me ranting about these things already. Some of you might be thinking of changing the DPI value to the highest and changing the pulling rate to the highest value to get the most precise mouse movement. Well, it might seem pretty simple to wrap your head around at first glance and you may fall into a trap by thinking as such without any proper evaluation of how it affects precision regarding field testing. Depending on what in-game resolution, in-game mouse sensitivity and the mouse sensitivity multiplier per optic influence how the input of the real-world mouse movement will get processed. I won't waste any of your time, but one spoiler, if you are using lower in-game sensitivity and lower DPI value, like 42cm to 52cm per 360, if I at 100 DPI, 1000Hz, 1600 x 900 resolution or closer, at that range of real-world mass movement, you usually won't see any stepping. What is stepping you may ask? I will show you what I mean by that later. So, changing the DPI value to a greater DPI value will not give you any advantage over how accurately your real world mouse movement are getting translated to the PC. Usually, the real problem comes in when you are using very high in-game sensitivity but still lower DPI value, anything ranging from 12cm to 24cm per 360. If far, 400 DPI, 1000Hz, stepping will get exaggerated heavily if you are using lower than 1000 hertz at 1600 by 900 resolution or closer. An experienced player can quickly point out if the mouse movement doesn't look or feel right. 
400 dpi and 800 dpi values simply don't have enough information or in this case the resolution to work with. If you are playing at 12 cm to 24 cm per 360 to translate it as accurately as possible to the real world mass movement. I have made some animation slides to make it somewhat simple to demonstrate what I'm trying to explain here. It is rough but hopefully it will make sense by the end of the explanation. Before I show you the demonstration slides, I must mention that this is just for the visualization purpose only. Therefore, the example slides are slightly exaggerated to better demonstrate the topics in minute details but are still valid. The first top left hand side animation shows a 1x1 one one, 40 pixel by 40 pixel grid and I've applied a flow noise texture to it. The noise mentioned above moves towards the minus 45x and minus 45y coordinates, equivalent to moving your mouse towards the positive 45x and positive 45y direction. The only difference for the top right hand side animation is in the pixel density, which is 1x1, one one, 160 pixel by 160 pixel grid, but everything else is the same. The bottom animation shows the actual surface of the mouse pad but at a microscopic level. As you can see, the 1600 dpi looks way more accurate than 400 dpi. This is because 1600 dpi can reconstruct the flow noise texture more precisely. After all, it has more resolution which 400 dpi results don't achieve. You can ignore the bottom surface animations because if you memorize the top animation slides and have a clear understanding of what's going on between the two, that slide will be enough for the future reference. You must also know that the mouse sensor can only capture so much resolution. Therefore, after a specific DPI value, the output results are interpolation from a lower or higher DPI value, which can cause mouse smoothing after crossing a given DPI value. The resulting behavior occurs in most mice, but it varies from mouse to mouse concerning how much mouse smoothing it could cause. Therefore, I can't recommend any specific DPI value which you could look into if you want to minimize mouse smoothing. For more information, a good gaming mouse can capture and interpolate between higher and lower DPI value without resulting in odd interpolation values up to a certain point. On the other hand, a low standard gaming mouse may interpolate the values from a lower or higher DPI value to odd interpolation values which can cause mouse smoothing. So first, suppose you spot strange behavior such as mouse smoothing, frame skipping or stepping. In that case, you are better off setting the DPI value lower. Next, find the native DPI values of your mouse, which may not result in odd interpolation values. Assuming other settings such as your PC setup, the config of your game and other variables are appropriately configured. Here it is for those interested in looking at an odd interpolation at a high DPI value on a substandard gaming mouse. Now moving on to the next slide, and again, this is just for visualization. Here, the top left hand side animation shows the reference line of the real world mass movement, equivalent to actual 45 degree mass movement. It shows the mass movement where the mass moves towards positive 45x and positive 45y coordinates. The closest we can match the 400 dpi or 1600 dpi line to the reference line, the better true to life mass movement should be. Since 400 dpi has less pixel density than 1600 dpi, you can see it not following the reference line whereas 600 dpi follows the reference line very closely. Remember the 400 dpi mouse translates to animation graph because it will come in handy to get a better understanding of what you are about to see next. No matter which FPS game you play, this logic applies to most of them. Although there are some exceptions where you must still see odd mouse movement even after configuring everything properly depending on how the game's internal code calculates, remaps and interpolates the real-world mass movement into radiance. In some games, you simply can't eliminate mass acceleration and mass smoothing, which is very unfortunate. Due to time constraints and other issues, I've only managed to record two comparison slides. However, it applies to most games, including FPS, DPS, you name it. These two slides will still be enough to understand how high and low DPI value behaves. And again, there's more of an extreme scenario for the demonstration. If you remember the reference line to what mouse translates to slide, you can see the same sort of mouse movement appearing in game 2. I tried my best to match the starting point, the ending point, the time interval between how long it takes the crosshair to move from point A to point B, which would be roughly equivalent to 45 degree at 400 dpi and 600 dpi values. 
Me and my uncle made a DIY mouse glider mechanism to replicate the mouse movement. The time interval between how long it takes the mouse to move from point A to point B as accurately as possible. So we can repeat the same condition multiple times if we encounter any comparison variants. 1600 dpi has more resolution, therefore it can follow my actual hand movement and later I will also show you how it compares when operating on a DIY mouse slider. I must mention in the first comparison that I performed physically by my hand, there are some human mistakes involved, such as mouse frame skipping, sliding, initial and the ending mouse acceleration. Because I was tracking the target at a very high sensitivity, roughly 6.5 cm per 360. It was difficult but apart from that, you can see it following my theory. After the first slide, I will show you what it looks like on a good mouse slider. Okay, I don't have to explain anything else anymore because you can see same sort of behavior in Quake Life too. So my theory is right, although there are still some exceptions to be made in other games. In those games, this logic simply doesn't apply, mainly due to other variables such as the game engine on which the game is running, the internal source code of the movement mechanics and other factors. This is why it is not as simple as it might seem to configure the mouse sensitivity accurately to match up with the previous sensitivity from game to game. Some of you know it, but I must also mention it for those who don't. Suppose you are switching to 1600 dpi from 400 dpi for example. In that case, your 8 in-game sensitivity of 24 cm per 360 if fire movement has to be divided by 4 to get the equivalent in-game mouse sensitivity at 1600 dpi. 1600 dpi is 4 times the amount of 400 dpi, so the new in-game sensitivity at 1600 dpi would be 8 divided by 4 equal to 2. This sensitivity gives you the same amount of angular heat fire movement concerning 400 dpi, but simultaneously keeps the same range of real world mass space required to do so, which is 24 cm per 360. Remember that every other settings is unchanged, such as the in-game resolution, resolution aspect ratio, field of view, and other variables. Interesting facts. A YouTube video claims a higher dpi value lowers the input delay than a lower dpi value. Unfortunately, I don't have any evidence to prove it as such, because I don't have the required equipments. 
but it's an interesting video for sure. So I will put the link to the video in the description. Please bear with me for a while. The slides I'm about to show are a simplified version of what's happening behind the scenes. So my theory is that, based on this experimentation, a higher DPI value containing more information results in the information executed beforehand and thus translating the movement before the lower DPI value even proceeds. A higher DPI value can translate to the closest end of the square wave point. Still, on the other hand, on a lower DPI value, you have to move your mouse on the real-world scale furthermore to trigger the translation, thus resulting in more time spent on the translation. In both DPI values, the movement ultimately gets executed. However, the question is, which DPI value can provide the information of the translation rule set to the computer fastest as opposed to the distance of how much the mouse cursor is being translated? The time it takes for both lower and higher DPI values to move from point A to B takes identical time, but measuring the instruction of the translation rule set individually would trigger the process of the movement cycle to a quicker true boolean value rather than a false, because a higher DPI value can take extra in between steps than completing the cycle in one go, point A to B directly, therefore lowering the latency. A higher DPI value having more closely interconnected square waves or pixels if you think in that term, it can move from one end of the curve to the other, one after the other. Moving the mouse sensor extremely precisely on a surface tells your system that you want to perform an in-game movement with higher precision. Running your mouse at a higher DPI value gives you the intended result of incrementing the steps accurately one after the other. However, you can't operate with that much accuracy on a low DPI value with lower subdivision segments. Therefore, if you move the mouse sensor with the same precision as you performed on a higher DPI value, the resulting translation would be drastically different and cost-stepping. A higher DPI value can translate the movement following the square waves step by step, one after the other, and remember, this is important, one after the other. 600 dpi has 4 times more smaller square waves in between the absolute path compared to 400 dpi from point A to B. A lower dpi value can only move to the closest low subdivision relative point of the square waves when the coverage distance is met on the real world scale. Thus, it can't follow smaller segments as a higher dpi value could. Alright, I know it is a bit confusing, but once you understand the logic, it will make sense. Some older games and newer games only provide control over minimal customization, such as filter view, resolution, aspect ratio, float sensitivity values, float sensitivity multiplier values, float sensitivity per optic multiplier values, toggle between relative and absolute radio sensitivity, and other crucial settings that CS players demand. You can only do so much if you are playing a game that doesn't have such options. In that situation, you can try to look for alternative words to overcome problems if you ever encounter one like tweaking the config file of the game to manually input the float sensitivity values instead of relying on the GUI of the game, switching to custom DPI values to compensate for the integer income sensitivity values, adjusting the field of view, applying the custom sensitivity value through the developer console and such. So in conclusion, so I would say if you are playing a game where your income sensitivity matches roughly 42 cm to 52 cm per 360, then switching from 400 dpi to 1600 dpi would not give you more precision as opposed to playing the game at 400 dpi. Now the exciting part, moving towards high income sensitivity such as 12 cm to 24 cm per 360 or even lower, you may increase the mouse dpi and give it a try and see how the mouse translates your reference mouse movement to in-game mouse movement. You may not notice much of a change based on your experience. Moving towards high income sensitivity ultimately comes down to your mouse controllability. Even a tiny increment of mouse movement takes a giant leap on your screen. So precise mouse control is the key to position at high sensitivity. And high DPI value is there to help you achieve that exactly. I only have a 720p and a 1080p monitor to test my experience on. So I'm still determining how it would affect those playing on a 1440p or a 4K display. Based on my testing, ranging from 640x360 to 1920x1080 resolution on CRT and LCD monitors, I noticed the same mouse behavior as shown in this video. As you move towards higher DPI or CPI value, it introduces more and more mouse moving. Even though higher DPI or CPI is generally better for accurate mouse movement, theoretically, but mouse smoothing is detrimental to precision and consistency. I am working on a mouse pulling red guide video too, so subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss it. Also, if anybody can forward this video to both Chris from Battle Nonsense and Chris from Frithy, 
I would highly appreciate it as it may encourage them to look at and evaluate these topics in more detail as they could get more insider information. If you want to reach out to me, please contact me through email or discord, so I would also love to know more about it. I'm happy you made it this far into the video and listened to my voice throughout. I apologize for my speaking and writing skill as I'm learning and it is not my first language. I hope you have learned something new from this video and hopefully next time when you choose sensitivity value, you better consider how it affects your mouse movement in relation to DPI value. I would appreciate it if you guys share this video with your friends as it will also be helpful for some of them. The amount of time and tries it has taken me to make this video was very long and I have encountered numerous difficulties. I will make a written PDF note of this entire video available to download in the description. Suggest me some other gaming related topics you would love to know more about. I might make another explanation or guide video, but I won't promise. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about DPI values. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.